Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Travis White, and I'm past governor of, of this esteemed district and also a past Rotary Foundation chair. But I'm speaking today as the stewardship chair on our Rotary Foundation committee. This is a grants management seminar that we do annually required by the Rotary Foundation so that we can qualify our people to participate in foundation activities and receive foundation money. As I said, we've got a large audience, 100 people. I'm gonna to have to keep you on mute and ask that uh, it was great that we had this opportunity for a little fraternizing the beginning, but we can't continue that all morning. We'll never get done. If uh, I would recommend that you check your view in the upper right hand corner of your screen. And I'm, I know you've all been participating in Zoom conferences. So I'm not going to go through a whole orientation on the, the Zoom process, but in the upper right hand corner of the screen, you can set the view so that you can either look at gallery or speaker view. I would recommend you get the, the most out of the program if you use speaker view. The chat at the bottom, I think you've all discovered that. We're gonna be using chat today. I'd ask that you minimize the use of it for social chatter because we're gonna to have to, uh, we're gonna be uploading some information on there later in, in the program. You need to know where it is and be able to open it, but please minimize it, just the uh, hellos and the high hi is because uh, we're gonna be asking for uh, information from you along the way. We do welcome questions and, and the way to submit a question is through chat and ask if you do that, that you put the chat question all in caps. Ronnie is gonna be monitoring the chat box for me. I won't be able to see it all the time. So she's gonna be monitoring and relaying the questions to me. And we may or may not ask you to unmute your mic and ask it in person. If it requires that kind of clarification, we will. Um, as I mentioned, we will be uploading some documents later in the in the program. So be alert to that on your chat box because you'll have the opportunity to download them and keep them uh, for future use. All right. You should now see my shared screen. Wave at me if you do. Okay, thank you very much. This is the annual grant management seminar that we do uh, at the requirement of the Rotary Foundation that everybody who receives foundation money must be qualified and part of that is to attend the foundation seminar once each year. This is what we hope to do today. Understand how to manage a grant, learn what we expect of you, taking care of that, the funds. We wanna qualify the clubs to participate in grant activities. And part of that is, as I mentioned, attending this seminar, but another part is there is a memorandum of understanding that you'll be asked, that each club is asked to commit to, and we'll get to that down near the end of the program. This is something that I wanna commend you to your attention as the first place you ought to start if you're, if you're involved in grant activities. The Rotary Foundation publishes and keeps updated the terms and conditions for Rotary Foundation grants. It's always, uh, well, this one here is dated April of 2021. So it shows you how current it is. And the first paragraph outlines all the things that have changed since the last time it was published. So you should know that you got it available to you Every club has been provided uh, this thumb drive. Uh, the president-elect has it. 
and this document and every other document we're going to be talking about today is on that that thumb drive all of the documents there are on my rotary that's where they came from so uh, if you don't have access to the thumb drive get on my rotary and and, and ask for uh, these documents this is what grant management is we do that very well and that's the reason that the rotary foundation maintains an a plus rating with charity navigator all the time we take care of our money we 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 control it we we administer it correctly we meet the needs of beneficiaries and we safeguard funds years ago we had a very restrictive grant program it was it was uh, top down managed it was paper driven uh, very restrictive and we did a lot of little bitty grants three four thousand dollar grants that didn't accomplish a great deal we redesigned the program several years ago trying to do these things build a grant program that has significant effect simplify the structure that manages it focus it on doing good things globally give you more flexible use of at the district and how we use money and make it an online process instead of the paper process we had at that time and we've continued to try to make this more user friendly if you will even though sometimes it seems very complex it's not that difficult if you take the time to learn how to do it and walk through it step by step this is what the grants should do i'm going to be using the word sustainability or sustain quite often because the rotary foundation puts a great premium on sustainability we want to do things that have a lasting effect not not just go in solve a problem and a year later the problem is back again we want to have a partner involved in it you will see that any global activity requires both partners in country where the project is to be implemented and out of country and we want to have a proper stewardship program to manage it. It should be based on a needs assessment, determine what a community needs, not what we think it needs. Determine what you have the capability to do, what resources you have available. Talk to the community to find out what those needs are. Create a budget that is manageable and meaningful. And set goals. Now, you've all been through some sort of management course somewhere along the line, talks about what what kinds of goals you should be looking for. These, these are typical, but they should be measurable. They should be sustainable, qualitative, quantitative. You know what that means. So it's important that you do establish your goals, though, from the front end. And you're going to have to lay that out in the grant request. Determine how you're going to measure it. That's another thing is going to have to identify up front in the grant request. The Rotary Foundation grants are designed to solve two programs. Rotary has two programs. One is humanitarian problem or programs. The other is educational programs. Humanitarian grants, for instance, providing potable water to a community that has no, has none, or it's an educational program involving scholarships or vocational training team. We're going to talk about some of each of these as we go through this morning's program. These are all available at global grants, but they're also at district in district grants are all the same just the scope and the method of funding is different at the district level there is one other grant 
that's new this year called Program of Scale. Now, this is something that's done once a year from Rotary Foundation. It's a large grant in the nature of $2 million. It's designed to solve a major problem for a large community somewhere. This year's grant, the first one, uh, is designed to alleviate 20% of the malarial uh, suffering from malaria in a, a large community in Zambia involving 10 districts and two um, two uh, of their rotary communities. It's about uh, 1.3 million people will be affected by this grant. So this is gonna happen once a year, no more than that. It starts at the club level, but as I say, it's, it's a very competitive operation to get a $2 million grant. Now, Before we get into the grants, we need to take a moment and talk about how we're gonna fund them. And the reason I make a point of that is it's changing at this point. We have for years seen our grant program grow. It's grown to the point to where we don't have the resources to support the grants that are being applied for. We, years ago, well, did seven, 800 grants a year. Now we're up to about 14 or 1500 grants a year. The grants in the old days used to be three or $4,000, maybe $8,000. Now we're talking about grants in the hundred, $200,000. So we need to find a way to, to fund the grants that, that are being requested. We don't have the resources to do that given the level of which we are giving. You've all seen this, this diagram before. The annual fund share is what pays for our grant funding. We give to the annual fund. It sits at the Rotary Foundation for three years. It, the interest that's earned during those three years pays the operating expenses of the foundation. And then at the end of three years, it's distributed. Half of that goes to the World Fund and half of that goes to the districts for the district designated fund. The World Fund takes care of global grants and global programs. The district fund takes care of global grants and district uh, grants. Now, as I mentioned, when this resource is not meeting the demand, we're not giving enough to cover the grants that we're requesting. So the foundation trustees have found it necessary to change some of the procedures by which the funds are being distributed. Right now, up until now, on the left-hand side, you see the way they've, they've been distributed. 100% at the end of three years is distributed with 50% of that to the districts, 45% to the World Fund, and 5% to the operating expenses of the Rotary Foundation. The global, the world fund is where we're suffering, where we don't have the resources to support the grants that are being requested. So as a first step, they've changed the policy by which now that $5 operating expense is going to be shared between the world fund and the district designated fund. The same 5% is gonna be withheld. It's going to be shared equally between, between the, the two funds. Now, let's see what that does at the district. The upper left-hand corner, you see, we gave $1,000 three years ago. Actually, we did much better than that. Multiply that by 800, perhaps. But uh, for want of uh, ease of de describing the, the issue here, we'll make it 1,000. Three years ago, we gave that much. We're now going to distribute it. The 5% has withdrawn before the distribution. Consequently, the DDF and the World Funds are gonna share that 5%. So each of them are gonna get 95 or 40, 45%, 47%, 50%, put it that way, of, of the, the distribution. The district gets 
its district designated funds and can use it in several ways. They can establish a district grant with up to 50%, no more than 50% of the total district designated funds. They can support global grants to the extent of the money available. And here's another change. The World Fund will match your money that goes into global grants, but now it's gonna match it at 80% instead of 100% as it has in the past. Now the district can also contribute to Polio Plus and Peace Centers and other Rotary programs. Our district typically does that each year. We, we put part of our district designated funds towards these programs, but we put usually the full 50% of the district grant and we use the rest of the money towards global grants. At the end of the year, if we have any unused district designated money, it rolls over to the set of the next year. There's only one restriction. It must be used for global purposes, cannot be used to augment next year's district grant. Now, in the past, that's stayed there forever until it was spent. There's another change. Now, at the end of five years, any money that's been there longer than that, up to five years will must be distributed either to one of the funds that the district chooses to send it to, like the World Fund or the Polio Fund or one of the endowment funds, or in the absence of instructions from the district, it will go to the World Fund automatically. Now, why is that? It's not going to affect our district. We spend our money. We don't have any leftover, except in the rare case where we funded a grant that doesn't get executed. And we just simply roll it over and apply it to that grant the next year. But there are districts throughout the world that are not as active in the grant program as we are. And that money sits there forever and ever and ever. And this is a way to tap that, to get it back into the World Fund to support our global grant program. So three changes on this chart. The 5% is drawn before it's distributed. Consequently, the DDF loses two and a half percent. The World Fund gets an additional two and a half percent. Global grants are matched at 80% instead of 100%. And the unused funds that are not spent at the end of five years are relinquished back to a usable function. Now, I'll take a moment at this point and ask if there are any questions. Uh, Travis, Travis, this is Ray Petnunas. Uh, I just wanted to ask you about, uh, you, you said that any excess funds of the district designated funds will be uh, held for five years. What, what happens with the world funds, where, where, if there's any excess there? Well, that's the problem. There haven't been. The world fund is short and is not meeting its global grant request. So uh, it, it, it's, it is spent. It's, it's just the money that's not being used they're seeking to tap. But it's a good question, Ray. Any other questions? All right. If, I, I have a question, I'm sorry. If, if those funds are held for five years and, and rolled over, so this year the district gave each club $3,000. If we did not spend ours and they rolled over, would we be able to next year combine those with the current? No. The money that rolls over cannot be used in the district grant. That's one restriction. It must be used oh. for, for one of the other programs or to support our global grants. Okay. Our, our, our district doesn't lose the money. So. District does not lose the money. Once we get it, it's ours, unless we don't spend it. And then, then we would lose it in five years. But no, we spend it. We never lose that money. It's just there are restrictions on once it rolls over, how we can use it 
we cannot spend it on a district grant uh, after it rolls over. Uh, quick question. I am um, uh, president elect here in Ashburn and um, I haven't given a lot of thought to where the grant is going to go and so on. And there's a little bit of pressure in defining what we're gonna do with that. How much time do I actually have to make that decision and um, uh, get the grants uh, distributed? You're, you're speaking of the, the district grant uh, asset. You hold that question. We'll be, we'll be addressing that later on, if you would. Thank you. Okay, let's look at global grants. This is another publication I commend to your attention called the Guide to Global Grants. It's on that thumb drive, just like the other stuff, but it's available download from my rotary. It'll walk you through the whole process. It's an easy to read document, not, not too lengthy, not too complicated, but it's a good guide to have at hand. That's the publication number on the left-hand side, 1,000. Now, global grants have got to meet certain requirements. One of them is it must meet the goal of one of our areas of focus. Now, you've all heard of the six areas of focus that we've had for years. These are designed to ensure that we focus our attention, our resources on those things that have a real impact in accomplishing the mission of the Rotary Foundation. Peace and conflict resolution, uh, disease prevention and treatment, water and sanitation, child and um, mother and child uh, health, uh, literacy and uh, community development. This year we've added a seventh one, as of one July at least, we've added a seventh one, which is the environment. And it's not surprising that in this diagram, the environment is in the middle because it impacts on all the other six and the other six all have an impact on the environment. You're gonna have to show that any grant, any global grant supports one or more of these areas of focus. And there is a specialist at the Rotary Foundation for each of these areas, sits at a desk that says, I'm the peace and conflict guy, or I'm the, the community development guy and your application is gonna be reviewed by him when, or her when, when it gets up there. Now, be aware that these are just not arbitrary titles, these <coughs> seven areas of focus. There is a specific guidance on what that means. There's a policy statement that covers all seven of them. And there is an individual policy statement for six of the seven, the seventh one piece, or excuse me, environment has not been published yet, but it's promised by the 1st of July. So these are good documents to get on hand. Again, they're on the thumb drive for the president elect. Global grants must be proved to be sustainable. Now, what does sustainable mean? Because sustainability means different things to different people, but to Rotary, it means this. Providing long-term solutions to community needs that the beneficiaries can maintain after grant funding ends. Now, they've given us a six-step guide to help us figure out what's sustainable or how to get sustainability. Let's take a look at that just step by step. Start with the community. Identify a need that builds on community strengths and aligns with the local values and culture. If you try to give them something that doesn't, it will not take. It will not be maintained by the community after you leave. It will not be sustained if it's not meaningful to them. There is a formal needs assessment that must go in with your, your grant application. There's a paragraph in the, camp, in the application that deals with needs assessment. 
second step, well, before I get to that, let me point out this publication designed to help you determine how to get a community assessment accomplished. Community Assessment Tools, RI Publication 605. Second step is encourage local ownership. If they don't buy into it, again, it's not going to stay. If you give them something you think they would, they need, but they don't want, it's, it's not going to be effective. So you need to identify the power sources in the community that can buy into it and can help sell it to the community. They need to buy in, they need to be owned, they need to own the project. Training is, is critical and you're gonna have to have a training element in any grant application. That may mean sanitation, health and sanitation training in support of a water project that, that, that may mean the ability to maintain uh, hardware. Uh, it may, it, it could mean anything, but you need to have a training element in the grant. You need to show that in the grant application. If you're purchasing equipment and supplies, it's best to do it locally. That way you can maintain it. You can get resupply and get repair parts as, as necessary. If available, get local funding. We aren't necessarily just funding destitute areas. There are resources available in many areas that could be applied in support of grants. And lastly, step six, make sure you measure what you're accomplishing. You've, you've identified your, your criteria and your plan and make sure you, you apply those standards to, to the project. What was step four again? Buy local. Now, rotary grants must involve both host and an international partner. The host is the sponsor in the area in which the grant is going to be implemented. The international partner must be somebody outside of the, the host country. That's a requirement. Now, what you see in the picture there is a handoff of a water project in Zambia between 7610's Strategic Water Alliance and the local club president. That's an interesting project that started back in 2007 with a single club, the Dulles Airport Club, and a, cl and a club in Zambia to provide water for a community that didn't have it. It's grown since 2007 to where we now have some 18 clubs involved in the Strategic Water Alliance. Uh, and they've accomplished over 50 projects in the Copper Belt of Zambia. And now they're spreading out and looking to other areas of the world to, to continue this effort. But it's a real success story for District 7610. Your grant project must have a budget of at least $30,000. Now, why? You want to be sure it has a significant impact. The, the, the projects that we used to implement with two or three thousand dollars to do this or do that uh, were, were nice to have. We can do that with district grants. But if you're going to do it globally, it ought to have impact and have lasting results. So it's got to be at least thirty thousand dollars. DDF, the district designated funds we put into the project will be matched, as I mentioned, 80% with the world fund. Cash contributions used to be matched, but no longer used to be matched 50 cents to the dollar. They no longer are matched. But if you got new cash money in the project, you've got to add an additional 5% for administrative costs. That matches the 5% that was taken out of the other parts of the funding. Host sponsors 
are not required to contribute, but they're encouraged to, but the international sponsors must provide at least 15% of the, the total sponsor funding. And of course, we can't use funds from other grants. We can't transfer money grant to grant. The district has to be confirmed as qualified. The district leadership each year signs off on a memorandum of understanding with the Rotary Foundation, committing to maintaining the stewardship principles that the foundation requires. Then the district must confirm that any club that participates in, in foundation activities must be qualified. And part of what we're trying to, we're doing today is get the district in a position to be able to do that. This seminar is part of that qualification requirement. The process now is totally an app, uh, online application. And we'll take a look at how that happens. Where do you start? I hope you recognize this as the, the homepage of my rotary. If you haven't been there, you really need to be there. If you're going to do a grant, you're going to go to this, my rotary, to the Rotary Foundation tab in the Grant Center tab. You click on that, it will take you to this page, which describes the life cycle of the Rotary grant. Uh, and note the comment about district qualification. It tells you that district leaders have agreed to follow the stewardship requirements listed in the memorandum. And part of that is the training of the clubs. But anyway, we're going ahead. We're going to go to this part of that page. Click on that. Bring you here. Down here, you're gonna to have to identify the type of grant. You don't have much choice. It's a global grant. That's the only one in the, on the drop down box available to you. Click on that, click let's begin. It'll bring you to the application. Now, to start, simple process. You fill in the name of the project. What type of project? Is it a humanitarian project, vocational training, or is it a scholarship? Who are the primary contacts? Both the international and the host sponsor have to be identified. And then we hit go. And there we are. We've got a grant application started. We have the number for the grant. And we got the first page of, of the application. The first step is to fill in the members of the committees, both in the uh, host country and the sponsor. See, this absorbs a lot of it. Did I do? Was there a question? The yeah. point is this this grant Travis, number. I'm sorry, Travis. We've had several questions about whether or not this information is going to be available on the district website. Could you please give everyone an update? The well, we are recording this this entire presentation. I forgot to mention that, so it will be available for you to review. Uh, the the process that I've just described is not on the district website, but I'll show you in just a moment where you can get some help with it. Uh, let me back off on that for just, just one second, and point out that this grant number stays with you for a year, as long as you've, you've got a year to work on the grant. And if it's not submitted within a year, it will be canceled, but you've got the whole year to make it, to get it going. The next page just are links to all the other pages of the of the district of the global grant application. Each one of those things opens up to a whole page 
Uh, and one of the things, for example, is step 10 is sustainability. That's where you have to lay out this, uh, this sustainability plan for, for this, this grant. Step four is areas of focus. You have to identify and justify how you're supporting a given area of focus with that grant. But here's the answer to your question. <laughs> and I didn't mean to, to put you off, but this is available to you. It is available at my rotary. It's available on that thumb drive as well. Each one of these paragraphs is a link to the instructions. Uh, I used parts of that for the presentation I just gave you that I walked you through. It's all right there. Uh, in that that uh, document. Uh, Travis, this is Ray Petnunas again. I, I have a, a question uh, related to the application. Uh, you said that the uh, uh, global grant has to be approved first by the district. And is there a process where it is approved by the district or do we go directly to the global grant on my uh, uh, rotary? and apply for it, it gets approved there. You start on my rotary with the application, but it's not submitted until the last step is accomplished, which is the authorization by the sponsors, both the host and the international sponsors and the leaders from those two districts. For example, in our district, it's Ronnie Chanker has to authorize it before it becomes an official submit, submitted application. So it's all done online, but it doesn't get to the Rotary Foundation until it is authorized as the last step in the application process. So when, once we uh, apply at the uh, homepage of my Rotary, then it, it basically goes to the district and they approve it there and then eventually gets to the, found, uh, the, the Rotary. Uh, the uh, once it's online, once it's initiated at my rotary, it's available for both the host and the international sponsors to work on it. It's a draft document. It stays a draft document up until the point to where it's authorized by, by the four parties that are on the last page of that document. There are four authorizations required. <clears throat> and, uh, and until that's done, the Rotary Foundation doesn't receive it or act on it. But I guess the question that I'm asking is there is no pre-authorization prior to the actual application on my Rotary. That's correct. Okay. Travis, before we move on, can I also jump in with one question? Um, I was wondering, so if I heard correctly, you said um, if you have, let's say 30,000 global grant, um, 15% has to come out of the sponsor club. So I guess the international sponsor. So that means out of our club, we would be putting in about four and a half thousand at least towards that funding. Am I correct? Well, that funding could come from a lot of different directions. The only thing I said was 15% of it has to come from out of country. Okay. Now that could be from the sponsoring club. It can be from the district designated funds provided by the sponsoring district. It can be donated by clubs throughout the world. Mm -hmm. Many times you'll have 100 or 150 different clubs sponsoring or, or contributing to the project, but only one, one sponsor. Thank so, you. Uh, our, our clubs often do that. We, we jump into grants that other districts are, are providing and offer to, to donate money from, from the club. So how much your club has to give, you need to work that out with, with your district. And we'll get to that in just a moment too. Uh, Thank you. I'm gonna slip through this quickly, but just you, assuming you've got the grant, you've implemented it, you wanna be sure that that you stay in touch with what's going on, communicating between the, the sponsors, both in country and out of country, uh, having a, an effective financial management plan that establishes 
responsibilities for for maintaining uh, the the funding of the program and keep good records. As you go along, make sure you continue to evaluate because that's going to be important to us in the end to help improve future projects and ensure that we're basing the success of the project on the goals that we set and that we identify successes so we can take advantage of them in the future. Now, <laughs> I think I'll try to answer your question about how much money or the funding of the of the project here. Before you even start, you should call Andrew Wade and talk to him about how you're going to fund the project. Andrew, are you online? Yes. Yeah, yeah if you, if you can see Andrew now. It, uh, he's the guy you want to talk to to discuss your funding how much you're going to give from the club, how much the district's going to do. Uh, you can work that out with him. And he'll offer you some alternatives. He may say, you don't need to put money into the project, but I want your money in the annual fund because three years from now, we'll get half of that back. But I can substitute what you would have given with, with the annual, with uh, district designated funds. So he can work some deals. Uh, the important thing that I said earlier was only that a certain percentage of the funding had to come from outside the country. It didn't matter where it came from or who it came from. It could be from a collected uh, collection of different entities. But uh, between your club, you know, who's sponsoring the, the grant, and Andrew, you can work out the funding process or how you're going to do that. You agree, Andrew? Yes. <laughs> this is a guy that started the whole mess with her strategic water alliance back in back in 2007. And that's how we got him roped into being in charge of all of it. Does that answer your question, Ellen? Okay. This is district policy, and that's the reason for the district logo on the upper upper corner. Uh, and it answers the questions about the submission. It, it's not a submitted grant until the DFRC, until Ronnie Chanker signs off on it. Up until that point, it's simply a draft. If you're going to change it once it's approved, then you're going to have to go back and seek prior. Uh, an additional authorization. There was a time when we had to get our, our applications in by the 1st of July or the money would be gone by the end of July. Well, that, that's not the case. We do run out before the end of the year now, but there's a continuing clock. We can You can start an application any time of the year and you're encouraged to do that. Don't wait till the beginning of the year. Don't don't sandbag it for the beginning of the year any longer. That bottom point is important, though. If the district provides DDF, they're going to ask you, we're going to ask you to provide some buy-in too, a commitment. It may go into the grant, it may go into an annual fund, but you're going to be asked to provide some contribution to that grant. The district's not going to do it all with DDF. Now, are there any questions at this point about global grants? Because I'm going to go on and talk about district grants next. If not, let's look at district grants. The district, the district has one district grant. The district can apply once each year for a grant. Now, what that means is the district requests a district grant that can be up to 50% of its total DDF. And it submits a spending plan along with that request. 
that outlines how the district's going to spend the money. Now, the district could do that in a lot of ways. It could have one big project that spends all that money if it chose to do that. But it's been our district's policy for the last, ever since we started this program, to request the maximum funding for the district grant, to retain a small piece of that as a contingency reserve and, and divide the rest of it up to all the clubs that want to have a local grant. That's been our policy since we started and it continues to be. Therein lies the $3,000 that you all got last year and the $3,000 that's gonna be available this year. And we hope to see that grow over time. It'll vary based on the availability of funding. Now, the district policy says we're gonna give you one grant per club because that's what how we got the $3,000. The clubs are asked to contribute an additional 10% to the grant. So if we give you $3,000 year, year, and you're gonna spend a, a project that takes that $3,000, you should have another $300 invested into it. That's your buy-in, your, your, your commitment to club uh, involvement. Uh, Travis? Yes, ma'am. Excuse me for a moment. We've had some questions. We're using some acronyms that people may not understand. All right. We had a question as to what is DDF. I thought I said district designated funds originally. If I didn't, I apologize. District designated funds are the funds that are allocated to us each year out of the distributions from the annual fund share. Is there another? We're okay right now. <laughs> well, I I have a question. Yes, sir. So I'm I'm having a hard time understanding that you allocate district grants and you can only get 50% of them and the other 50% goes where? Okay, the district receives 50% of the well 47.5% of the distribution from the uh, annual fund share at the beginning of the year. The district can take that money, half of it can go into a district grant if it chooses to do that. And that's what we were talking about here. The other half the district can use to support other programs. It can be used to support your global grant requests. It can be given to the Polio Plus Fund. It can be given to support the, uh, the peace centers. Uh, there are a lot of things the district can choose to do with that money, but generally in our district, that 50% supports your global grants. 50% supports the district grant, the other 50% supports global grants, although we do give some donations to Polio Plus and the peace centers. Is that, uh, is that clear? Well, yes. You 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 answered the question clearly, but it it really amounts to the fact that 50% of the district um, funding can only 50% can go to local purposes. So in other words, you're already we we get half of the allocation, but the rest of it goes to the jet the the global programs and the uh, larger rotary goals. So, you know, well, I guess my point is that often some some clubs have it, some clubs have more impact locally than they do globally. And, you know, you're limiting the amount of local funds, it seems to me. And I, I have to say at the outset that I'm a little new to this, and this is my first one of these meetings, but I'm trying to understand you know, why the district funds aren't really for the district, half of them are for the district. Well, no, I understand your question. You should understand that global grants don't necessarily, and I failed to make this point earlier, don't necessarily have to be overseas somewhere. There are occasions which we do global grants locally. Ray Petunius can tell you about a grant that the, the um, Alexandria Club did several years ago 
with a partner in England to support Meals on Wheels in Alexandria. Uh, so global grants can be used locally as well as internationally. They don't have to all be international, but it has to have an international partner. That, that's one of the caveats. There are a number of global grants in that have been uh, executed in, in West Virginia, I know, in the district that, that uh, I've been involved with out in West Virginia. So it, it can be done locally too. More traditionally, our, our, inter our global grants have been done overseas. But if there's a need locally and if you can get an international partner, that money can be spent locally and it doesn't have to be limited to, to the, the, the amount of money we got in the district grant funding. So there are opportunities to, to, to extend your support locally as well. Does that help? Yeah, well, that's, I understand what you're saying, yes. And um, you, you, you can agree with it. You could, you, could, you could feel free to call me to discuss, but um, yeah, this, we've been pushing for many years to write global grants right here in our, you know, in 7610, but you know, it is sometimes tough because sometimes $30,000 in Northern Virginia doesn't go as far as $30,000 in Honduras. Um, but you can write a global grant in any country, any place, anywhere. Um, and a, another, I think a little bit of a, a misconception is the 50% that comes back to us in DDF that gets spent on global and district grants. When you write a global grant, you get the world match to the part that goes to the world match comes back to your global grant anyway. So we're really getting way more than that 50%. So it's, um, and, and, and again, it can be written anywhere. There's nothing to stop it. As long as the area of focus is right uh, here, then that's, you know, that's. And if the need is there. Right. And, and if you can get the sponsorship elsewhere to help you do it, and those opportunities are there, then you can do something significant locally. And the $30,000 is just the, the, the bottom limit of, to what you can spend. You can spend $100,000 if, if that's what the project requires or more. Right. And where the 15% comes in is you just don't wanna they set that up so that otherwise people will just be spending money in their own backyard. The money is required to come from overseas. Yeah, that's what your international partner has. To, yeah. You got to get somebody to agree to that, that part. But but th there's been enough relationships built through this district that when the time comes, um, there are willing and able other districts and um, clubs to fund projects right here. We just haven't had a, a Rotarian recently to write anything uh, that's that's local. Hey, Travis, this is Ray Pettinus again. Uh, I'm, I'm just wondering if the confusion that we're having right now is uh, in that very first bullet, you have up to 50% of DDF. Shouldn't that be 47.5% of DDF? No. Yeah, let, let me clarify that. 47.5% of the annual fund distribution out of the Rotary Foundation comes to the district as district designated funds. The district can take 50% of that and okay. put it into the district grant and the balance of it used for the other purposes that the district uh, is going to pursue. So yeah, that 50% uh, we've, uh, we've used too many times, I guess. But the point is, half of the money we get can be put in the district grant. Okay, am I good? Yeah, Bobby, I'd like to tell you that uh, the uh, clan, uh, clubs can partner on these, these district grants projects if you choose to. The, the club that uh, is the lead club takes on the responsibility for the application and all of the, the processing, but the other clubs contribute money, but they don't get another project uh, once they've done that. You get your one grant 
uh, per or one project per club. Question. Yes. Does the district have a list of clubs that maybe don't have a district grant uh, planned and do they keep a list like that? In other words, uh, our club is searching for partners and do you have a list that I could go to to see if they would like to partner with our project? Bobby Baker, would you like to comment? Or Ronnie? Uh, uh, Travis, I'm not sure if there is a list of that. Uh, each club in the district is uh, uh, allowed to apply for a district grant. However, if they choose not to, then, uh, you know, uh, that money is, 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 remains in the big pot. Uh, the only thing I can say is that uh, each club can contact another club whether it be the president or the foundation chair, whatever, and ask them if they are applying and then also if they would be willing to. Yeah, yeah I, and I, I did this year go through to see which clubs um, actually have a district grant and which ones don't. We had 43 clubs this year that applied for a district grant. There are a few clubs that obviously a few other clubs that do not apply. Um, but uh, it's always different. And uh, if you're interested, you do need to reach out to some clubs. If you contact me, I can let you know whether or not they had a, a grant this year. So you might be able to approach them for next year's grant to see whether they were going to have one. And the other question I'm, that's showing up here is why are we only allowing 50% or the, or the, the person said the bottom line they see is that uh, only 50% of the clubs DDF can go locally. And yes, that is correct. That's, that's the way that the um, foundation allows us to allocate our money. The, um, I can tell you that the Centerville Chantilly Club is looking for partners. If you're looking for somebody to partner with, they have a project in Haiti that uh, that uh, they're looking for money to support uh, providing some potable water to uh, a school uh, that was devastated by the, the weather down there. Uh, and at various times, other clubs put out feelers asking for your support. Uh, so if you're interested in participating in it, in a, uh, a grant, you don't have one, uh, at least I can steer you to the one club that's, that's looking for it right now. They, they, I, do, uh, I, do, I do know, I'm sorry, I do know that the uh, Rotary E-Club is also coming up with a new district grant this year and they are also looking for um, clubs to partner with them. Yes, I, my club also, Alexander, you, Ronnie. <laughs> and what I'm suggesting is that if a club does not have a plan for a district grant, they could notify somebody in the district and the district could keep a list so that then that uh, the club that's looking like my club looking for partners could go to the list that the district keeps and uh, say, well, this is what my club is doing. Would you like to add on to my pro program project? Uh, it, this is Pat Borowski, and I just want to say real quickly, starting next year, we will have a listing um, that clubs can submit their significant project. That would tell you about the project, the details. That can be a district grant. It can be a independent of any grant, it can be a global grant, it doesn't matter. And that will provide you the index that number one categorizes the projects and the seven areas of focus, and will give you the details and that way you'd be able to do your communication more efficiently. By next year, you mean 21-22 projects? 
Yes, it'll begin in July, but it does depend upon the cooperation of the clubs to submit the information. Good, thank you. That's the lady that's making it happen, so you can depend on it. Thank okay. You. Travis Ray Pet Nunes again. Uh, yes, I'm right. Getting back to that first bullet up to 50% of DDF, uh, isn't that how that $3,000 is calculated? That 50% of DDF, which we put in the district grant, yeah, that, that's subdivided to get to 3,000 after some of it's held out for, for uh, a contingency reserve. So the, the real important number is the 3,000. Yes. That's what limits the 3,000 to 3,000. Yes. Are you, are you gonna talk about uh, the timing of, of these and when they should be applied and things like that? What, we know, when, when, when do we apply for these district grants? I mean, they, they're, there's, a, there's a, a, a time process in doing this. I'm trying to move my screen forward. I was just wondering if you're gonna do it. I am, yes. Oh, okay. That, I, I thought that was next, but I gotta do something first and then I'll come back to that. Okay. The, um, how do you apply for a district grant? I hope you recognize this page. This is the home page for District 7610's website. There is a foundation tab there, and there is a district grant tab there. And if you click on that, it'll bring you to this page that talks about the grant, and it gives you an opportunity to click on that, which takes you to the application. Now, this is nothing more than a a writable Microsoft Word document that you can fill out online, you can submit it online, you can download it, you can print it out and save it, but it, it's a simplified uh, process for applying for, for your grant. It's a five page document, there's the first two, there's uh, the next two and right in the middle of the left hand side it asks about partnering clubs. Is there another club partnering uh, with your club on this project? And the signature at the bottom, and once it's all done, send it to Bobby Baker. And I think this answers your question, Ray. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Typically, we get the money in July. You're asked to submit the uh, application by June 1. That is, we want to submit the district's application by June 1, which means Bobby needs your club proposals, club projects part of that, because these club projects are gonna form the spending plan that the district is going to send to the Rotary Foundation for approval. The application goes in June, uh, from the club, once it's implemented, we're asked for an interim report in February and a final report in May. And that May date is important because it drives the first bullet up there. If we got the application in by one July, we'll get the money in July. If we have cleared the previous year's grant report, the final report. If we have not, it'll be held up until that point in which it is complete. Uh, even though our application is sitting there, it won't be funded until the until we clear the last year's report. We also have to have all of other grants uh, current as well. Any other grant the district's responsible for cannot have a delinquent report at that point. That's happened to us a couple of times, so we didn't get the money till even as late as October. So we we need to get reports done according to this this table. And uh, if we're gonna get the money in time to have the whole year to spend it. Is that right, Bobby? That's correct. As of right now, I think I still have about 15 clubs that I'm waiting on final reports. Yeah, no, that's the final reports due May 1. 
and we're a couple of days from that point. So that's how critical it is. It's important to get onto that and get the, get those reports clear. Yep. Otherwise, it holds up everything. Say, so, Travis Ray Penunas again. When when do the clubs actually apply for the district grant of three thousand? That's the June one suspense. That's the June one. So if you want, if the if the McLean Rotary Club wants a district grant for the, for this year, that it has to apply by June one. The Bobby, for your confirmation. Yeah, yeah that's that's correct, uh, Travis. Uh, I'd like to have the applications in by June one. Uh, can I interject? If you want a, a district grant for July 1, 2021 through June 30, 2022, it's due June 1st. Can you say that one more time? I'm kind of confused of what year is what year here. The, uh, the district grant application for the $3,000 is due June 1st, and that money will be awarded uh, as of July 1 for a district grant taking place during July 1, 2021 to, to uh, May 31, 2022. Uh, Ronnie, I have a question, which is, um... Our club, let's say, is applied, we'll, we'll get in our application that we're applying for um, the uh, grant that we're sponsoring, right? But we, if, what about the other clubs that say, well, we're going to give some piece of our money to it? Uh, do we just include them in our application or do they have to send something as well? They are included in your application. Thank you. Thank you. And turning it back to Travis. Okay. That picture at the bottom is a typical district grant. That's that's my own club, the West Springfield Club this year, took its $3,000 and solicited other funds from the community. Total of about $7,000 went into procuring supplies to uh, load snack packs to be donated to the local food pantries in the community for distribution to the needy people throughout the community. Okay, this is that anything further on district grants. Okay, let me move on to scholarships and so this will be fairly quick. We have two kinds of scholarships, the global and the district. First, the global scholarships. Remember that global scholarships are global grants and meet all the same criteria that a global grant requires. That means it must have an area of focus that it supports. It must well, remove that 15,000 match. I've failed to take that out of the slide. The Rotary Foundation used to require a $15,000 match for all grants. They no longer require that. They only require the $30,000 minimum for the total grant. They must study at a foreign institution. The graduate studies must be done cannot be undergraduate. You got a picture of Ted Husser there on the right. Ted's online today. If you got a question, it requires the club submit the application. The, the applicant is interviewed by a district committee and selected. Uh, and we have funded up to three scholarships per year, depending on the availability of funds and the availability of candidates. Ted, are you there? Yes, I am here. Thank you, Travis. Anything to add? The, uh, the scholarships have been $40,000 uh, a year. This year we had, uh, we awarded three scholarships. We had about 12 applicants 
the applicants are very high quality. Uh, many of them, several of them are from UVA. So we have a very good uh, participation from UVA, but uh, they're wonderful scholarships. And I urge all of you to think about uh, getting young people involved with this uh, scholarship. They, I know they've always been terrific candidates. It, the DeSefs sat in on that committee in the past, some past years, and it's a hard decision to pick, pick the ones you want to send because they're all such high quality. Okay, we do have a district um, scholarship as well. We don't use it very often. We've done it once. Uh, we just fund it out, out of the district designated funds out, out of the, the district grant, actually out of the contingency funds that are been held out of the district grant. Can be local. Uh, it's district policy says we're not gonna, we could go for a full four year scholarship if we had the money. We, and we, we could do it locally if we wanted to, but we've chosen not to. The, the one time we used it supported one student who was a nursing student at uh, Northern Virginia Community College uh, for actually two terms. That was several years ago. It's not come up to be used in recent years. But if you find a need for it, same, same uh, application process, you send it to, to Ted uh, for a decision. On the vocational training teams, this is a, years ago, we had something called the, uh, the group study exchange program, which was a cultural exchange. We would send a team to another country for a month and they would send a, a team to the, here to our district for a month. And they'd get around the district and talk to people and learn a little bit about our country and have a good time. But, it didn't accomplish what, what the foundation was really trying to accomplish. So we, we eliminated that program as a formal foundation program, although some districts still do that out of locally uh, generated money. The vocational training team replaced that. It's, in, it's designed to teach or to learn. It can be funded either globally or district grant depending on well, then whether or not there's a need for foundation match and, and the extent of the project. Uh, Michelle Peters, Mish Peters is the project manager for our district. She led the, the one team that we've done actually three times now. Uh, the most common use of a vocational training team is to send a team to a foreign country to teach people to do things that that they don't have the capability to do. It doesn't have to be Rotarians. It can be non-Rotarians and they can stay for any length of time required to, to complete the project. The, the one project that we have done, Mish Peters led along with Lois uh, from uh, the Bailey's Club. Um, excuse me, the Mish is from Bailey's, Lois is from the uh, McLean Club. They took a team to what was then known uh, Swaziland, it's now known as Eswatini, to uh, provide dental training, dental treatment, and training for educators for learning disabled children. That's Misha's specialty. They were so successful that they went back the next year, did it again, and then a third time. That's taken on a life of its own. Now the community is so committed to it that they've come up with land and with money to build a school for the learning disabled children in, in that community. And uh, me, outside of this uh, vocational training team has continued to work with that project. She's raising money for it right now uh, for a water source for the school that she's building. The grant's not paying for the school, it's, <laughs> but it's paying for a lot of other things. 
other so the grant that they're putting together is paying for a lot of other things if you can't build a school. Okay, quickly in summary of the global and the district grant. Global grant must be $30,000, there's no minimum on the district grant. The global grants funded by the World Fund, DDF and cash, district grants strictly DDF. District manages the application processes local, locally for, for the district grant. You need an area of focus for the global grant. You don't for the district grant. You must have a partnership for the international global grant. No partnership for the district grant. They all need to be sustainable, measurable, and the scholarships are required for the global grant. They must be graduate level and postgraduate, whereas there's no study level for the district. But they all must adhere to the terms and conditions of Rotary grants that I showed you very first part of the, the presentation. And they must have active Rotary involvement. Any questions at this point? I'll take a, a brief moment if we are. We're on the downhill track. This is what I'm charged with as the stewardship chair for, for this foundation committee. We must ensure that we have all of our projects, the oversight of grant funding includes rotary supervision. We don't give money to others to use. We supervise the, the use of it ourselves. We have adequate financial records in place, subject to review, adequate oversight for funding. And if there are any irregularities reported, they must be surfaced immediately. They go to the Rotary Foundation if that occurred. We've been fortunate this has not occurred in this district. And the timely submission of reports is important. You need a financial management plan that determines who has the authority to distribute funds, who has the signature authority on the account. You must be using traceable checks or bank cards to track the funds and keep a good ledger on how that money is being spent. There's a requirement to make the documents available and visible to the members of the club that, that's sponsoring this project. It's best, uh, it's easiest if it's electronic, but make sure you keep them for a total of five years and keep backup copies. There is a requirement to report for your grants, verifies that they're properly, that the funds are properly managed. For global grants, there's a requirement that that a progress report be submitted every 12 months. The, the grant is alive every 12 months, starting with the first month of payment. And the final report within two months of completion of the project. If that's not done, then there's serious replications, uh, implications for us. We've had some occasions where we've had grants that were not reported in a timely manner and it held up our future grants, held our district grant up for, for several months. So we gotta be sure that grants are reported in a timely manner once they're complete. And this just talks about what the grant should, the grant report should include. And to the point of qualification, this is what's required for each of our clubs that are going to be the beneficiary of a district grant or a global grant. 
they must be somebody in the club must have been qualified. And that involves attending the grant management seminar for somebody. Doesn't have to be the president or the president elect. Ideally, it will be somebody who's involved in the management of the grant process within the club. The club must have submitted a signed memorandum of understanding, which I'll show you in just a moment, and a, a signed addendum to that memorandum, which is a district document. You must have the stewardship controls in place. You must be current on reporting grants, current and past, and current with RI and district on your dues. Given that, that's good for a year. It has to be done every year. It's not our option. The Rotary Foundation requires the annual qualification. We'd hope that, that the person involved is in, in getting qualified is the one that's going to, to manage the, uh, the process within the, in the club. But certainly read the MOU and adhere to it, implement the procedures. Uh, contained therein. <clears throat> and that brings me to the memorandum itself. On the left-hand side, and we're uploading them to the chat box about this time. So you can, you can download them, you can open them up, take a look at the whole document. I'm gonna show you just the first page here. On the left-hand side is the memorandum of agreement the Rotary Foundation requires. You know, you can't see it on this page, but at the bottom of the last page, it'll have the date 2012. That was the year it was written and hasn't changed since then. It's been the same document every year. The right-hand side is the district addendum to the memorandum, which does have a date because it is revised every year as the process and the practices for managing our grant change within the, within the district. Basically the district MOU governs our district grant process. On the last page of each of these documents is an, uh, an authorization, a signature authorization. We need the signature of two people. You're submitting it during this year while you have a sitting president, but next year your president elect is gonna be responsible. So we ask for the signature of both the sitting president and the president elect who will be responsible for implementing the MOU next year. And that's for both documents. And then those documents need to be submitted either in writing or electronically to Rotary Foundation Chair Ronnie Chanker at the address uh, shown on the bottom of the, of the document. And that's the essence what I have to talk about today unless you've got additional questions. You will email us a copy of the MOUs for us to fill out? No, you've got the MOU right now on your chat box. You can download it now. <laughs> All right, I hear you, but I don't know how to do it. Look at your chat box. Don't, don't try to teach me at this point, thank you. The MOUs will also be on the website, the district website. Okay. It'll be downloaded uh from there. Quick question, is there a suspense date for getting all the MOUs into the district? Ronnie? Uh, I'd like to have them in as soon as possible. If you are applying for a district grant, which is due June the 1st, if I don't have an MOU, um, mm -hmm. then that will preclude you from having a district grant. So I would definitely need it by June the 1st if you want a district grant, but my ideal would be to have it in uh, when you're finished this session. Question, um, if your club is partnering with another club, does your club submit an MOU even though the other club has taken care of it? Yes, every club must have both signed MOUs submitted 
If you do not have an MOU submitted, you cannot participate in any grant, whether you sponsor it or you partner with another club. Thank you. Um, I, it's Ellen Westlaw. I have a question. Um, in terms of excluded expenses on district grant applications, um, heretofore um, salaries, stipends for teachers, for instance, were not allowed. Is that still the case? Yeah, we, we cannot just give money to another group or organization. Okay. If you wanted to make a purchase for teachers, you can do that, but you can't just hand them funds. Okay. We have had one request to um, allow us to give out gift cards for social workers to give. So that is not allowed either, correct? That is not allowed. I, I actually tried to do that. Sorry, my phone's ringing. Um, several, two years ago, we had several clubs that could not do their district grant because of COVID. And uh, we tried to get um, other, um, we substituted new grants for those. And one of the requests was to do gift cards. And I contacted uh, the Rotary Foundation and they refused. Okay. Cannot do that. All right. And in the what you can do and what you can't do, that's really governed by that first document I showed you earlier. Okay. Terms and conditions spells out specifically. All right. Thank you. What you can and can't do. Travis, this is Grace. Um, so with if we buy equipment in that country, they have to be translated into a dollar amount when the receipts are submitted. Is that correct? Uh, yes, it's local currency, yes. Travis, excuse me, Travis, I've had several people say they can't download the um, MOU. If you could, um, if you look at the chat box and there's a click to open, you should be able to click it and it should open for you. And you can download it. Uh, Ronnie, what about this supplement? Like the, this one's, this one's fine, but what about the, sub, the extra supplement for the other signature? Yeah. For global. I, I'm sorry. I, they, I'm sorry. What was that question? Anything. So you, you just you, you attached the the one MOU, but I'm saying where's the supplement MOU? There Where are two of them there. There are two MOUs. There's one that says District 7610 Addendum and one that says Club Memorandum of Understanding. I need both of those. You're on mute. Do you, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, can you can you see those? I, I just see the one. Uh, can I ask that we put these MOUs on the district website so people can download them? They are there. They okay. are. They, yeah. Um, I'm going to leave the meeting. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Um, I, I, can I just ask, are you see, not seeing both of them? Because I see both of them up. They're both I, there. I, okay. They're both there. I just don't know how to download them, but I'm right. on the district website on my cell phone and I don't, I don't see anything, but the six, it's got six areas of focus under foundation. What are you supposed to look at to find the MOUs? Uh, again, if I could just, this is Pat. It, I did ask Ronnie and Travis uh, at the end of this presentation, all documentation that has been presented. Uh, we will get a copy of that and we will also post it in the Learning Center on the district website. As Travis indicated, it will be available uh, under the foundation area and uh, of the website, but uh, it, then you'll have it in a couple of places. I've also just put my email address in the uh, chat box. If you want to email me, I'm happy to um, send it to you also if you can't find it um, any other way. And I have all of the contact information for each of these responsible parties on the screen now. Question, um, once we have these documents and we've signed them, um, to whom do we send them? And do we send them like as an attachment uh, electronically or do we mail them in paper? The instructions are at the bottom of the document. 
that you can go either way. You can do it either in uh, hard copy or you can do it electronically. Thank you. And I know you mentioned this, but I, I can't, I forgot the, to get to the application itself, the DDF application, that's on the district site, wasn't it? The, uh, yes, on the district website under foundation and uh, district grants, and I'll just walk you down through it. Thank you. Well, I thank you for your time this morning. And uh, I hope it's been, been beneficial to you and hope we accomplished our goal today. But managing the grants and managing them properly is an important part of how we do our business. And we do it pretty well in this district and want to continue to do so.